Namaste and welcome to Live, Love, Engage. I am Gloria Grace Rand and today I've got a guest on the program who is going to be helping us to uh, learn how to say no and, in a graceful way and also talk a little bit about how the brain works. Um, her name is Michelle Molitor. Is that my pronouncing the last name right? I've yeah, you got it. Oh, very good. So first off, welcome to Live, Love, Engage, Michelle. Thank you so much to have uh, having me on the show, Gloria Grace. It's wonderful to be here with you. Well, we appreciate it. And I know that we're going to have a really great conversation today because let me share with you just a little bit about who this wonderful woman is. She is the founder and CEO of, CEO of Nectar Consulting, Inc. and co-author of the best-selling book, Breakthrough Healing. And she works with executives and entrepreneurs, bringing more than 25 years of experience, intuitive insights, and strategic business savvy to their success. She's an expert at, enhan at enhancing the capacity of leaders to build high-performing teams and exponentially increase bottom line results. And she does this through a unique rapid rewiring approach, I should say, um, which is a culmination of years of study in the realms of emotional intelligence, neuroscience, organizational psychology, and rapid transformational therapy. And what she's able to do is catalyze shifts in thinking and eliminate mental and emotional blocks to rapidly rewire your brain for greater confidence and success. And I tell you, that is a really good thing to be able to help people with, because I know as someone who has um, discovered over the last, certainly over the last 10 years that I've been in business, that I've, I have had some limiting beliefs, uh, shall we say, that I inherited from my, uh, from my parents, especially my mom, that I've had to uh, work with and, and rewire yeah. a bit in order to undo those things that we <laughs> that we inherited thank you to our lovely parents and families of origin <laughs> oh yeah absolutely you know and they and they did the best they could and that's and and a lot of stuff is not even even their fault it's going back even more yep, it gets handed down yeah it's handed down absolutely well one of the things i wanted to talk to you about is something that i know again this is something i have personal experience with um the way i i grew up being a bit of a people pleaser shall we say and i know mm -hmm. i think also a lot of um women and and women entrepreneurs um we are especially heart-centered people i think in particular we want to be able to help everyone. We, we want to be able to, um, you know, make our clients happy, or we want to make our families happy, or we want to make our communities happy, and uh, sometimes put, wind up putting ourselves last. So how do we learn to say no with grace and grit? <laughs> yes, it is an, an important skill to learn because um, we are compassionate, kind, amazing human beings, and oftentimes there is that people-pleasing element with us, um, within us, to keep the peace, um, to not upset the apple cart, mm -hmm. uh, to go along, to get along, right? And I myself have, you know, done a fair bit of that myself too, um, over the years. And, and through my work as an executive coach and rapid transformational therapist now, um, for, I just had my 19th anniversary last week. Wonderful. Congratulations. Super exciting. <laughs> um, and, and what I found is that we have these, these beliefs that we've inherited, right. That are implanted in our subconscious thinking and the, and our, the back of our mind, which, is about 90% of your brain power, right? So mm -hmm. it does most of the work yeah. um, in the daily computing of our lives. And if you've got beliefs in there that say, oh, in order to be safe, I have to behave this particular way, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you can thank your amygdala, which is the uh, fight or flight mechanism in your brain. I like to call her Amy. 
Amy <laughs> loves you. She just wants to keep you safe. Right. And Amy's uh, very steadfast. So if you give her a belief at age five, she will hold on to that belief um, <laughs> until you rip it out of her hands and give her a new belief, <laughs> right? So the first thing is to notice where are you avoiding social pain for fear of being judged? I'm going to say, sure, I'll do that because I'm avoiding social pain of being judged, of uh, being not liked, uh, fear of missing out, FOMO, you know, it's very popular. Um, and, and just recognizing like, oh, I didn't say no to helping that person on that project, even though I know that I don't have enough time and I'm already feeling overwhelmed, but I, I wanted to make them happy. And so you get to notice where are you sacrificing yourself, your own needs, wants, and desires to take care of other people, even though it's making you unhappy, hmm. right? Yeah. And I can hear, I can hear the chorus saying, but isn't that selfish? Right. No, no my friends, <laughs> it is not being selfish because if you're depleted, if you've given everything to everyone else, then there's nothing left for you. And then you can't do your good work in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it's about pulling your own energy back in, recalibrating and getting more and more clear and discerning what, what do you really need to say yes to and what do you really need to say no to, right? So you can do that a couple of ways to make that those uh, priorities, right? Mm -hmm. First, understanding what are your core values? What are the things that are like water and air to you that you have to have in your daily life? And if that request coming at you is out of alignment with your values, that's one indicator that you might need to say no, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, an another indicator is um, how is your body responding to that request, right? We have this amazing contraption called a body and we operate most of the time from about here up, right? From just yeah. the head up right. and we ignore all of the other information we're getting from our body. And if someone says, hey, Gloria Grace, can you jump in and help me out with this project? I know you're really busy, but oh gosh, I could really, really use your help. And if your, your shoulders immediately go, right right up into your ears and your back tightens up that's your your body going hmm you might need to pause and think about that for a hot minute right so yeah. really tuning into your own internal dialogue and listening to the wisdom that it has to share with you is really really important um when we ignore that um our bodies will get louder and louder with their messages, right? Oh, yeah. First, it might be a headache, then it might be a backache, mm -hmm. and it might be a migraine, mm -hmm. and then you might be on the floor with your back out, right? Yep. <laughs> it's like your body going, I, I tried to warn you, <laughs> but you didn't listen. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> right? Uh. So there's, there's these different tools that you can use to start to help guide you in discerning what's going to be most important for you as the way to share your time and your your life force, your energy with other people. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely have learned, and, and it's been interesting over the last few years that my body is very sensitive to my emotions. And it, I mean, this first showed up, I think, after my sister passed away, and like that following year, I was having tremendous back issues. And and once I got it under control. And then when it came back, I was like, okay, what's going on in my life right now? And then I'd be kind of like, oh, yeah, that's what it is. And as soon as I could start to fix the emotional side of it, then the back tended to clear up. So, which is um, kind of disappointed my chiropractor. I'm not going to see him as often, but, um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but I like it better myself. Well, and, and you raise a really great point. One of my favorite quotes is your greatest, um, wait, no, not that one. Um, this quote um, is emotions that cannot find their vent in tears will cause other organs to weep oh. by Dr. Henley Mosley, which mm. is from like the 18th, you know, the 18th century or something. Wow. Right? He was a psychologist. And and I, yeah, I had a similar experience, right? My, I literally got up on Thanksgiving morning and my back went yeah. locked up. 
Mm. And I was in severe pain for like nine months. Mm. I had cortisol shots to my spine, nothing oh. helped. Oh. And I had, uh, unfortunately, that, that May, this was after seven, eight, nine months, a very mm. close friend of mine passed away unexpectedly. Mm. And we created this beautiful ceremony of life for her. And I just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. And, cried. Mm. and shortly thereafter, my back pain went away. Mm. And it was such a huge aha for me to see like, oh, I had had all this pent up other emotions, other traumas in my life mm. that were all being stored in my back. And when I let them out by just crying my eyes out for hours, literally, yeah. um, it, it started to dissipate. So um, there's a lot of power that we hold in our bodies mm -hmm. and we just have to got to let that stuff move through. You can't, you can't think, Oh, I'll, I'll get to that another time. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. It, it comes back to haunt you. I'm, I want to, I want to talk about something else in a minute, but there's one thing I find it really fascinating when I'm interviewing folks and I see signs behind them. And for those of you who are listening, you're not able to see this, but you have a great sign on your bookcase that says behind every successful woman is herself. Amen. I love that. And you next to that, it says me a possibilitarian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, share, share with me a little bit about that. What, what does that really mean to you? Um, so a, it was a gift for my mother mm. and my mother's a very strong woman. She and my father have been business partners and married for 60, almost 62 years now. Mm. And, um, you know, I've always uh, endeavored to be as good as a businesswoman as she has been. Mm -hmm. And, you know, women are amazing. We are the, we are the doers and the plate spinners, not to say that men don't do as well, right. but it seems like, you know, there's always career and family that a lot of women have to balance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which doubles the load and they still don't get the credit and they're paid less than men. Yeah. <laughs> right? Really. Which is yeah. really annoying. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, it's even more evident now with, with COVID. I just saw an article on the news just yesterday about so many women are actually leaving their jobs because they have to be at home taking care of their kids because they're homeschooling their kids, right? right. It's, it's yeah. just, it's been crazy this year. So, you know, giving yourself credit for all the hard work that you do, mm. right? Yeah. Um, and and know that you are tenacious and you're resilient and you are able to do this. Um, I, I, uh, earlier this year, I worked with an amazing coach um, by the name of Lindsay Ardmore. And uh, we did some serious deep dive work together on some of the aspects of my business. And, and she sent me this bracelet when we first started and it moved me to tears because it says, and still she persisted, mm. right? And it's just like, it still brings me to tears. It's like someone recognized how hard I work. Yeah. Right. And, and gave me credit. Mm -hmm. Right. And we don't, we don't do that for ourselves and we don't do that with each other, particularly as women. It can be very easy to see women start snipping at each other. And it's like, ladies, we gotta, we gotta stay together. That's right. right? Yeah. Absolutely. We really got to have each other's back. So um, that's kind of what's behind that. <laughs> like that very much very good um well i the other thing i want to talk to you about is something which i think also does sort of play into why maybe why we don't give ourselves credit enough um is this area of neuroscience and i i have to tell you i've been um well actually fortunate and and this is my sister helping me out from from beyond she had a she had a wonderful she was a massage therapist and she had a great book collection. And when she passed, I, I sort of just kind of picked some books that sounded interesting and brought them home with me. Well, a couple of them were actually about the brain. And, and I know one of them was called like making a great brain great or, or making you know, something, make it great or something and, and how the brain works. And, and I read them and I was really fascinated about um, our capacity to uh, really change. So I was wondering, first off, what 
what made what got you interested in in the subject of neuroscience in, in particular? Sure. So um, I in my former career, I was a creative director in web development. Hmm. Um, I did that for 10 years. I was a graphic designer, creative director, and then I um, I moved to San Francisco at the height of the boom in 2000 and thought I had my golden ticket and we were going to IPO and then the market crashed. Yeah. And uh, essentially about nine months later, I got bullied out of my job oh, no. and, and it was quite devastating for me. And I, at that point, my, my uncle suggested that I get a coach of these things called career coaches. Now mm -hmm. I was like, okay, where do I find one? And so I, I found a coach to help me figure out what to do next because I was such a deer in the headlights. Mm -hmm. And in the process of being coached, I found my true calling like, oh, this is the work I'm meant to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I got trained and certified, started my company, Nectar Consulting, and I've been doing it ever since. And all along the, the last 20 years, I've I've been doing a deep dive into personal development and mm -hmm. how does our brain work and, and why do we do the things that we do and why do some people have confidence and some people have no confidence, right? right? This has been really fascinating to me because my confidence was shattered mm -hmm. and I, you know, was like trying to glue the pieces back together and re <laughs> recalibrate yeah. who I was. Yeah. And, and so it had me really do a deep dive into, well, how do our brains work and why is it that, some people react this way and some people react that way. Um, because it, for a few years, I had a whole belief around coaching. Well, it's kind of woo woo, right? <laughs> but it's not woo woo, it's science, people. It's science. <laughs> That's what I love about it. And so it's actually now the, the, the science has, has given us so much more information about how neuroplasticity works, right? Mm -hmm. How we can continually learn and grow and change our brain. Um, so many amazing stories about, um, for example, people who have suffered strokes, mm -hmm. right? It literally yeah. kills a part of your brain. Yeah. And now science tells us through this amazing process that other parts of your brain will literally start to rewire themselves to take over the part that's not working. Yeah. Right. And you can retrain your brain. Right. So so basically what I do through my rapid rewiring work is I'm combining what's called rapid transformational therapy or RTT for short with coaching over a 30 day period. And I'm I'm getting I'm helping people get at their limiting beliefs at a subconscious level. Mm. Right. And we're identifying them, we're rewriting the script, rewriting the story, the emotional baggage is getting left behind, mm -hmm. and then building new neural pathways in their brain around new beliefs, new habits, new strategies for success. So it is possible, it's very powerful. Um, I've worked with folks all over the world and have helped them not only change their mindset, increase mm -hmm. their confidence, their self-esteem, um, their levels of success. But in the process, those emotional scars that we've been carrying around, as we talked about earlier, can create physical manifestations and ailments in our bodies. Right. And so I've watched folks literally release chronic migraines, IBS, um, uh, which word I'm looking for, um, adrenal fatigue that they've been dealing with years and decades mm. in a matter of 30 to 90 days. Wow. So it's, our brains are phenomenal places and we've only scratched the surface mm. of what we can actually accomplish with it. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And it, and it is interesting. I, I, this capacity to change, um, to change our thinking and because we have that power and I've definitely, I've learned that in working with other, with different coaches and in different programs and, and even just figuring it out for myself sometimes, because I, um, there was a story I had developed from something that happened to me when I was seven years old, I was in second grade and um, I guess I was, I, I, I liked a boy and was chasing him around the uh, schoolyard at lunchtime um, trying to kiss him. And one day during show and tell, he got up and told the class about that. And 
I, at that moment, just got so embarrassed. I mean, that's, that's what I remember just feeling really mortified, embarrassed that he, you know, told everybody what I was doing, not that it was really a big secret because everybody, you know, could see that what I was doing, it really wasn't right. a secret, but I, because I didn't have confidence in myself at that time, but I was going through a program in, uh, a few years ago and I was at the airport journaling and this idea, this thought came into my head about, it, and I was like, hmm, you know, maybe I was looking at it wrong. Maybe he was actually bragging to the class um, that I was chasing him. Maybe he really even liked me and I just took it the wrong way. I could have just as easily um, been happy about it and, you know, maybe sat up straighter and, the, you know, and smiled and, you know, said, huh. Um, but I didn't do that. But I'm thinking, well, maybe I can just decide to that is what happened now because what the heck he, he's he's not around he doesn't know anymore you know uh, he's not going to know if I cho change my mind about it so uh, so I'm just choosing to now remember it in a much more positive way because that other way didn't serve me at all <laughs> exactly and and you did a you know that's a a beautiful key thing to do right there right I do that with my clients while they're in hypnosis actually like mm. okay so see the scene that you're seeing, feel the feelings that you're having. Now, how do you really want it to be? Change the dynamic, change the story, change the outcome, because your mind in a state of hypnosis doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. Right. So when you change it, right, in this state, then you're, you're letting go of the emotional charge mm -hmm. that was around that scene. Right. And then you're like, oh, that was great. He really liked me. And wow, I got his whole boost of confidence from that. And wow, I feel great. And it creates this amazing ripple effect all the way forward throughout your life. Mm, that's awesome. So, so that is what you do then. You help people actually using hypnosis as one of the tools that you use. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's smart because I think that does probably make it happen faster that probably leads to that rapid transformation you're talking it, about. it does it, it makes things happen a lot faster because um you know coaching therapy they all have their places mm -hmm. and um what i love and what i've experienced for myself using rtt is that when you get at something at a subconscious level you're bypassing your critical judging mm. prefrontal cortex right where we do about five to ten percent of your conscious thinking so you move past the conscious mind to the subconscious mind in an alpha brainwave state, which is that half awake, half asleep place. Mm -hmm. It's actually your super learning state. Mm -hmm. So when you're changing out the story, you're swapping out the script, bad script, good script. Okay, put the bad script in the trash can. And then I actually create a customized recording for my clients as well, based on all the data and our conversations and whatnot. Mm. And it's mixed in with binaural music and it has in a particular way in lilt and, and cadence, um, instilling new empowering beliefs and thoughts and habits, right? And you listen to that recording every night as you drift off to sleep mm -hmm. for 21 to 30 days. And that repetition is actually building those new neural pathways. So your brain likes what's familiar right? and what you're familiar has been, oh, I'm a terrible person. I'm so embarrassed. I have no mm -hmm. confidence. Right. Yeah. And so Amy, your amygdala took mm -hmm. that belief and has been holding on to it this whole time. Exactly. So now you're saying, Amy, no, no, we're going to change that. I'm going to swap you. I'm going to give mm -hmm. you this new belief. And we're going to take that other one. We're going to throw it away. She's like, oh, okay, great. I still have a job. Just <laughs> as long as she has a job, she's yeah. very happy. Right. <laughs> And so through that process and over that 30 day period, in addition with the coaching and whatnot, mm. um, my clients are able to really find new perspectives about themselves. Mm. I am enough. I am confident. I believe in myself. I'm worthy. I'm lovable. I'm deserving. Right. And when they can start to change those beliefs at a very deep subconscious level, everything starts to change. It's really quite amazing to witness. Mm, yeah, I can imagine. That's, that's awesome. Um, what type of, or, well, let's see, I'm trying to think one better, better way to say this. Well, what is your, what is your favorite thing? At, I, well, let's just go there. What's, what is your favorite thing about what you do? What, what really just lights you up about the work? Oh you? gosh. The thing that lights me up the most is when 
I'm working with someone and they come to me and they're like, oh, I have this, this heavy, horrible thing that I'm carrying and I can't carry it any longer. Please help me. I just don't, I tried everything. I don't know what else to do. Mm. Please help me. And they're even skeptical. Like, right. are you sure this is going to work? <laughs> and we go through the process and they do the work and they listen to the recording and we have our coaching sessions and they show up on the other side of that mm. and they're lighter and they're brighter and they're just, they're, it's like, they're a whole different person. I have a, a thank you note here on my wall hmm. that one of my clients sent me. She had been dealing with a, um, an eating disorder her whole life hmm. since she was 15 and she was yeah. 50 at the time. And, um, it says on the front, the mind is everything, what you think you become. And in it, she, she basically says, you know, thank you. Although our time together was short, you've truly transformed my life. I'm eternally grateful. Mm. And her, her need to, you know, binge eat a cake or a pie at night yep. um, disappeared. And she wrote me, you know, like a month later, she was like, I'm down a dress size. I feel great. You know, so it's, it's those moments where someone reclaims their life from their fears that have been holding them hostage right. for 20, 30, 40, 50 years that that's the the beautiful nugget um mm. that lights me up and makes my whole day yeah that's great um i can see that being so worthwhile and i know even the work that i've, I've done with clients it, it does it's like when i hear about them doing something that maybe they were scared to do before and now they've been able to do it does yeah makes me feel good too um when how actually, well, yeah. How do you, do you generally work with clients like one-on-one -on -one, or do you ever do uh, any other type of like group programs or how does that work? Yeah. So um, yes. And yes, both is the <laughs> okay. answer. Um, so I have a couple different ways that I work with folks. I have my, my one-on-one -on -one rapid rewiring program. That's the deep dive work that we do over mm -hmm. 30, 60 or 90 days, depending on the stuff that they're coming to me with. Um, I also have my Rapid Rewire membership community. Hmm. And inside of that, um, we have twice monthly masterclass coaching sessions. Each month we have a different topic. Hmm. This month we've been talking about tapping into your power and presence. How do you expand your presence as a leader? Hmm. Um, we have um, guest experts and each month has a different um, transformation recording. That's that um, guided hypnosis recording that I make. Mm. Um, and then there'll be other tools and, and tidbits that I put in each month. Cause I have an abundance of content that I love to share with people. So, um, the membership people can come in and stay, um, you know, it's monthly, um, stay as long as they like. And there's a ton of, of information and resources there and a beautiful community of support of like-minded other business professionals from all over the place in it. So, um, and then, you know, for my corporate friends out there, I'm actually getting ready to launch a whole corporate um, employee well-being program, mm. which is going to have trainings, which includes the membership as well uh, for support for folks. So, there's a couple different ways that I get to work with folks, which is really joyful. That's awesome. Yeah. Have you, um, and actually I'm just even curious for me, just cause I know that um, for some reason, especially like this week, it's been uh, challenging for me. And uh, a good friend suggested that it might've been because both presidential candidates were in our state and maybe I was picking up on the energy. And I was like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, the whole <laughs> nation is feeling crunchy right oh, now. Oh so, yeah. Um, but I'm they just- They can't come fast enough. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so I'm gonna be really glad when that takes place. Um, ha have you found um, that ha for yourself, I mean, because you are, you know, you're doing work for other people, but how has this year, <laughs> which has been a unique year, um, how have you been managing and what, what do you do to be able to help yourself when you feel challenged? Sure. Well, um, as a, uh, I, I learned this years ago, oh, as a highly sensitive person, i.e. I have very active mirror neurons in my brain, which pick up on everybody else's emotions, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, always have been this way. And so I'm very aware of all that's happening. I mean, just the energy of this year has been very heavy and anxious mm -hmm. um, for many, many people all around the world, right? right. And so um, before COVID, I would go to the gym two or three times a week and I lift weights, right? Yeah, and yeah. I was super strong and then COVID <laughs> hit and I can't go to the gym and I haven't been able to go. Yeah. So hopefully like, this weekend, I actually get to go to the gym for the first time and I don't know how long, but um, for me, other ways that I've been coping, uh, meditation, um, I was able to plant and nurture my vegetable garden this year. So that was, you know, my Zen time would go out at lunch and I'd water my tomatoes and talk to them and make them happy. Um, and um you know, just being outdoors, going for hikes, watching the birds. I have a hummingbird feeder attached to my window and they oh, come okay. and dance for me all the time, all, mm. all throughout the day. And then my own pets, right? I have a couple of cats and this crazy golf and cockatoo named Alice that keeps me very well entertained. So <laughs> um, it's, it's really about taking time to reconnect with yourself mm -hmm. and getting quiet, um, doing a digital detox, turn off the news, um, take time to do creative endeavors. I paint. So that's like, that's one of my paintings. Oh, um, lovely. and just, you know, finding outlets for that energy. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't get bottled up and, um, listen to your body. So it, it, cause it'll tell you what it means. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's good. Great advice. Cause I think that is, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a challenging year for everybody. And I think it's so important to find ways. And um, I know I've, I've done some new things this year. I mean, I even, I even started writing songs, which is something I haven't wow. done. Since I was like seven, I think. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. So, um, and just doing lots of different writing, even, you know, poetry a little bit. And so um, I am, I realized too this week, I was like, I think I need to do some more of that. So I started doing some different types of journaling to help myself. And it's it's so important. We really do need to take care of ourselves. Um, yes. Because like you said, if we don't, then we people aren't going to be able to, we're not going to be able to take care of other people really if we don't start with ourselves. Right. And you know, the, you've probably heard this before, use it or lose it. Mm. It's very, very true about your brain right? And your body. Yeah. So if you just sit and, and are sedate on the couch and you're not using your body, you're not using your brain, mm -hmm. it will, it will wither on the vine, right? Mm -hmm. So um, getting some kind of exercise every day is really important uh, for your physical and emotional well-being. You know, it, it creates endorphins throughout your body, which makes you feel better. Some of your happy chemicals, um, you know, for me, designing things, building things is a creative endeavor. So I've, I've literally built out this whole um, corporate employee well-being program over the last three months. Like, <laughs> oh, I could have sat and read a book or I could <laughs> this whole new thing. So, you know, that's, that's just what keeps me happy and keeps my brain engaged and mm -hmm. writing articles and, and giving, you know, interviews like this is all fun stuff for me, right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, I want to also ask you if someone is interested in learning more about um, some of the rapid rewiring that you're offering, what is the best way for people to learn about you? Sure. So um, you can always visit my website, nectarconsulting.com, N-E-C-T-A-R consulting.com. And it's, I'm getting a new website any moment now, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm pulling some things apart. So you can always look for me at nectarconsulting.com or very soon in like probably three weeks, michellemolitor.com as well, right? Very so good. you'll have access to me in both places. Um, and invite you to, if you're curious and you'd like to talk more about some of the challenges you're facing, I'm happy to have a complimentary discovery call with you. We'll spend 30 minutes over the phone and you can share with me some more about what's uh, not working and what you'd like to shift. So um, it is possible, I promise. Excellent. Yeah, it is. That's for sure. I, I, 
as <laughs> I like to joke sometimes, as screwed up as I've been in the past, um, I know I've made a lot of progress. And so if I can do it, anybody can do it. And even faster, I'm sure. <laughs> but but I'm okay. I'm okay with the pace I'm taking. It's all it's all you know, we all get there the moment we need to get there, not a moment before. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if you are listening right now and you don't have a pen to jot that down, don't worry, I will have all of the, the links in uh, in the show notes for you. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for being here. It's been a real, I knew this was going to be a good conversation and uh, I'm really glad that you were able to take some time and spend it with us today. Yes, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. It's so lovely to, to chat with you and hopefully provide some insights for folks who are listening. And yeah, you know, what, your brain is an amazing place. So you get to use it and strengthen it like every other muscle in your body. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, again, thank you all who are listening, the subscribers. I appreciate you. And if you're watching on YouTube as well, I appreciate you um, doing that. And I appreciate all the comments. It's nice to get reviews and comments on my YouTube channel too, which is wonderful. I, I do pay attention to them. I do read them. And uh, until next time, as always, I encourage you to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically.